these fights. A lot of people are are saying that this is one of the the one of the best cards for UFC. I don't know if I would go that far, but what's your kind of overall thoughts, you know, going into this fight uh, here in my backyard in Dallas? Wow, that's awesome. You know what? It's a, it's a great card. Definitely the best card of 2017. Um, it's it's definitely not the best card ever. Um, I mean, it's definitely up there though. Um, a lot of great, great fights. There was six really solid fights. One of them uh, got canceled. Someone I think had an injury or whatever. I can't. Even, I'm not even sure. But uh, still, five really, really good fights to talk about. And uh, I mean, two two title fights on the line. It's it's going to be a great night of fights. And I, I just wish I lived in the area because it'd be cool to see that live. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I did everything in my power to try to get a press pass. I waited too long, but yeah, it's probably it's going to be at American Airlines Arena, which is right down the street from me. So it, it is pretty exciting though, to have UFC here and in, uh, in my backyard, though. All right. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, so you're going to the, the fights or? No, no, I won't be going. Um, my plan was to go, but no, I won't be going. Oh, okay, I see. All right. But uh, definitely good to, to, to see Dallas get some action uh, with UFC. So let's let's kind of start at the preliminary card and work our way up to the main fights. And the one the one I really wanted to touch on was was Eddie Alvarez uh, versus Dennis Portier. To me, this is an interesting fight right here with Eddie Alvarez coming off of this loss uh, from Conor McGregor in a pretty embarrassing fashion. Uh, so kind of break down this fight. Do you think Alvarez can come back and and get a win in this one? I do. I really do. I, uh, I'm predicting him to, to win, um, Eddie Alvarez, that is. But it's, a, it's an interesting fight because both of these guys have actually had, um, had lost to Conor McGregor. Um, Dustin Poirier, he lost to Conor McGregor back in 2014. That was Conor McGregor's first pay-per-view card. Um, it was the real first exposure we got of Conor McGregor really getting into his opponent's head. Um, but, you know... It's an interesting fight. Eddie Alvarez needs to win this. Um, I think he can win it. Um, Dustin Poirier, though, is a is a very talented fighter. I will say one thing, though. When Poirier has moved up in competition in the past, he, has, uh, he hasn't been so successful. So he's got the skills to beat Eddie Alvarez, but I, I just think Eddie Alvarez is going to uh, grind out a decision here. Um, but it's, a, it's an interesting fight, you know, definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think it is – Interesting. And yeah, you, you, you were right. Uh, he lost to Conor McGregor at UFC 178 in 2014. So they have definitely have something in common. Let's see uh, how he, he, how he's able to go into this fight with Eddie Alvarez. But I think I have to agree. I think this will be a win for for Eddie. All right, let's. Yeah, let's, no. For sure. Oh yeah. Go, yeah. Um, so let's look at this next card and I know I'm gonna mess up this name. Uh, it's a middleweight bout. David Branch versus <laughs> um, Crystal, <laughs> Crystal, Christoph, I guess. All right, go ahead and say it. Yeah, you know what? To be quite honest, I'm not too familiar with these guys, actually. Um, this, this fight got um, – that, that, the first fight on the, the main card just got added yesterday. Um, so I, I wish I would have uh, put some time into doing my homework on those guys, but uh, – Unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with them. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was the uh, Henry Ciuto and uh, Sergio Pettis. That was the one that ended up getting pulled off the card uh, with Ciuto suffering a hand injury uh, before the bout. So, yeah, that was the one that got pulled, and it looks like they replaced it with that fight. But, um, yeah, that one, that one I, I didn't really get a chance to look at that closely either. But David Branch is 20-3, and three, and um, – Chris is off to, uh, Jotik, uh, 19 and one. He's actually ranked ninth in, in the middle weight division. So I think that that's a good, wow. sub, that's a good substitute. I would definitely say uh, for the Ciudo fight, we were going to see Ciudo versus Sergio Pettis. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, um, the, the, the Pettis, um, Cejudo was definitely, uh, you know, some high level fighters, but we're replacing, you know, some flyweight, a flyweight fight with a middleweight fight. So, 
nothing wrong with that. And and, and uh, Jotko is, like you said, ranked number nine. So uh, not a bad replacement, like you said. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now let's let's talk about this Frankie Edgar fight, who's coming off of a win at UFC 205 over Jeremy Stevens, and this is versus uh, Yair Rodriguez coming off of a win also uh, from BJ Penn, which was uh, that, that was a pretty sad sight to see for, for as far as BJ Penn goes. But uh, what's what's your thoughts on this fight, Rodriguez versus Edgar? This is um, probably the most interesting matchup on this card, perhaps. I mean, it's it's a tough one to predict, you know. Frankie Edgar is the former champion, um, just a, a legend of the sport. He's a Hall of Famer. He is basically, he's known as the Rocky of, uh, of the UFC. You know, this guy, tough as nails, never gives up. Um, you know, well-rounded, good footwork, good boxing, good, good wrestling. And um, he's just a nightmare nightmare to deal with. But Yair Rodriguez is the future. I mean, this guy is one of the most exciting, has one of the most exciting styles in MMA. I mean, the, the, the kicks that he utilizes, these so-called high-risk kicks, are um, they're elementary to him. He, he, he throws these high-risk kicks like a boxer throws a jab. You know, he, he's very comfortable. He trains with these crazy flashy kicks all the time. So he, he's gotten very good with them. Uh, a lot of people don't think he can get past Frankie Edgar because, you know, this is a, a real step up in competition for a year, Rodriguez, but because, you know, BJ Penn, as much as he is a legend, he had obviously seen his better days um, and he really never should have been in there with Rodriguez, but this is a real test for Rodriguez. And if he gets past Frankie Edgar, which I think he can do it, I'm, I'm predicting yeah, you Rodriguez to get a um, a close but clear decision win over Frankie Edgar. I think that you know his height. Rodriguez is about five inches taller than Edgar, so he's going to be towering over him in there. I think it, his awkward movement and I think it's just going to befuddle Frankie Edgar. To be quite honest, Edgar has the more experience, but he's never been in there with a guy that fights like Yair. So it's going to be a tough guy to train for for Frankie. So I mean. Uh, I see this being a, a close, but I got I got Yair Rodriguez winning that. And I mean, this guy has a very bright future. He, you know, he's a Mexican and he's got a, a country behind him. He hasn't really hasn't become a star just quite yet. But um, I think this fight this fight is going to be that fight for him. That's what I think. I think this is going to be his. His um his coming out party, you know, for Frank for uh Yair Rodriguez. Yeah, and, and like you said, Frankie Edgar at thirty five, he's got a lot of experience, but this is a young, scrappy uh Yair Rodriguez who's twenty four and he, he's got a black belt in Taekwondo. So this and like you said, his kicks are amazing. And right now he's on a seven fight winning streak. So he, he's got a lot. It's a lot on the line, I think, for Ayer, especially him being ranked seventh, Edgar at number two. If he gets this win, this will kind of propel him into uh, into further UFC stardom. Uh, Frankie Edgar would probably end up getting a title shot, I think, if he would win this. So there, there's a lot on the line for both of these guys. Absolutely. No, it's um, just just quickly. I saw an interesting stat um, because a lot of people, like I said, are, are picking Frankie Edgar to win uh, because of that experience factor. And I mean, since two, I saw a stat since 2008, Frankie Edgar has only lost to two men, Jose Aldo and Benson Henderson. And I mean, that's in the last nine years. Wow. So there's a reason why people are hesitant to pick a guy like Yair with little experience. I personally think that he's got the skills um, to do it, but he has to go out there and do it. So that'll be – that's why we're tuning in, I guess. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's what's going to make this interesting um, is those two, uh, those two combinations of what's, uh, the, what's at stake and what they bring to the table. All right, so – and that is an amazing stat as well. Uh, but let's go to the uh, Damian Maia – a Brazilian guy, 24 and six versus Jorge Masvidal, 
32 and 11. That's, that's a lot of fights. That is a lot of fights. Um, I know Damian Maia, I think the interesting thing about him uh, from what I did through some research is he is, uh, so he is, I guess, seen as one of the, the kind of best ground and pound guys. Am I, am I correct on that? Absolutely. And not just ground and pound, but, but submissions. Um, but yeah, tremendous, tremendous on the ground. I mean, Masvidal does not want to go down there on the ground with Maya. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, like you said, both guys have a lot of fights, um, especially, especially um, Jorge Masvidal. I mean, Masvidal has over 40 fights and, and he is actually the favorite in this fight. But a lot of people are, the MMA hardcores are picking Damian Maya to win this. He's been on, uh, I think, a six-fight win streak. He really should be fighting for the title right now. Um, but, you know, he, he's taken this chance against Masvidal. And I think it's a risky one for Damian Maya. I, I, I think he should be the favorite. But um, I'm, I'm going with Jorge Masvidal in this fight to win. I think that his, um, Masvidal has a very underrated wrestling. And if Masvidal can stuff Damian Maya's takedowns, and keep it a standing fight, it's going to be very problematic for Damian Maya. Damian Maya has to get it to the ground um, to win, and I think Maya uh, Masvidal has to keep it standing to win. That's just uh, – it's pretty obvious. You know, you, you got a, a solid boxer, one of the best boxers in the UFC, Masvidal, very underrated boxing, um, and against Maya, who really arguably has the best jiu-jitsu MMA has ever seen, period. So – it's a very interesting matchup. I think it's going to come down to the wrestling. Can Maya get the takedown or can Masvidal stuff the takedown? But it's interesting, though, because Masvidal, he's been around for a long, long time. And he was actually a part of the backyard fights uh, way back in the day when Kimbo was doing oh. the back, Kimbo Slice. Yeah, he was doing those backyard fights. Well, Masvidal was just a young kid, 20 years old, fighting grown men who were much bigger than him. He had a, a man bun at the time, so he looked quite different. But this is a guy that, a, a true guy, a true guy from the streets, you know. Uh, he's seen a lot. He's kind of like a Diaz brother, you know. And um, personally, uh, Jorge Masvidal versus Nick Diaz would be a, such a fun matchup. The buildup would be great. Um, I think Masvidal, if he gets this win against Damian Maya, he'll get the next title shot. And I see him becoming a big enough star because – uh, he, he's a great interview. He, he says some controversial things at times. Um, and, you know, he, he comes to fight and he has an exciting style. In the past, Masvidal has been kind of known as a guy who would get up on the scorecards and then just coast. And he, he lost a couple controversial split decisions that way. But now he, he's not leaving it in the hands of the judges. He's learned his lesson. So, I mean, it, it's a tough one. It, it's the, the common sense says Damian Maia is going to win, but I'm going Masvidal because uh, Damian Maia hasn't faced anyone that has the d d defensive wrestling like Masvidal does, you know. Um, guys like Carlos Condit and Matt Brown, who Maia beat recently, I mean, those guys are tall, lanky guys. They don't have that much center of gravity. Masvidal's short, compact, he's stronger, his wrestling's better. Uh, so, so I think he's going to get it done um, in a similar fashion to maybe like what Robert Whitaker did to Jacques Ray Souza recently. Right. But that's just how I see it. Uh, that's uh, really flip a coin though on, on that one, though. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and you made a great point. Yeah, j with uh, Jacques Ray, that is a, a, a combination to this fight because a lot of people seen, even myself, I seen Jacques Ray coming in and winning that fight. He was on such a, a such a streak and, and he started to kind of reach that that spot where this guy is, is, is awesome. And who knows if he can be beat. So that this is, this is very, a very similar fight as far as the, the matchup goes, but I wanted to point out Damian Maya, you look at his past uh, six fights, uh, submission, submission, submission. Uh, the other three were decisions. So if this gets to the ground, Maya definitely has the upper hand. Uh, he's 39 years old. So he is, he is 70 years older, which I think age does play a part, especially if this ends up going longer distance. 
but I, I'm, I think I'm going to go with Damian Maya in this. I, I think, I think uh, it's going to be a similar fight like the Whitaker and Jacare, but I, 